Hello, everybody. My name is Deepak, and I am a software engineer at eBay, working on uh, AI platform. So that's my LinkedIn handle, in case you want to connect with me. Uh, and we are hiring uh, globally. So in case you find something interesting, you can always uh, connect with me on uh, LinkedIn. So I'll be doing a quick talk on uh, how we use uh, Grafana and InfluxDB to monitor the resources uh, that are consumed by uh, machine learning and uh, deep learning jobs that happen uh, on uh, eBay. So before we do that, uh, uh, I'll just give you a quick overview of uh, uh, what is the AI platform uh, at uh, eBay. So uh, prior to uh, using AI platform, uh, the various data scientists within eBay were doing uh, all their machine learning and uh, deep learning jobs uh, on desktops. And uh, that had uh, I a mean, series of problems, uh, getting a new hardware or better hardware and better utilization of resources and all. Uh, it had its own uh, problems. And there was no standard uh, s solutions. And, uh, and the community also was uh, not, uh, uh, not, 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 not much uh, available at that time. So when we came up with the uh, AI platform, uh, it, it gives a series of advantages uh, to the entire deep learning community within uh, uh, eBay. So what it does is, like at first, it uh, lets you uh, uh, do uh, accelerated training. So we actually provide them with a high-performance uh, compute cluster, uh, which contains uh, more than 100 uh, bare metal nodes. Uh, each one of them is having uh, one terabyte of memory. And uh, we also give them, more than, uh, we give them access to uh, more than 100 nodes uh, with uh, GPU cards on them. So if you're doing deep learning, computer vision, and all of that, uh, you uh, really need uh, uh, pretty aggressive hardware. So we actually provide them uh, that. In, addi in, in addition to that, uh, uh, to do any kind of machine learning or deep learning, uh, you need uh, access to a lot of data. So eBay being a web company uh, collects uh, lots and lots of data. And uh, all of this data is stored, uh, is, uh, uh, is created by various different kinds of teams. And each one of them uh, uses uh, their own uh, storage solution. So uh, one of the major goals for the AI platform was uh, to uh, enable this uh, data access uh, uh, for those uh, deep learning and machine learning jobs. In addition to that, uh, uh, it actually uh, lets you uh, automate the entire deep learning process. So if you want to do any kind of machine learning or deep learning, you actually end up writing a series of tasks. tasks. Uh, you need to probably clean the, clean the data before you even start doing anything. And then uh, you might want to work with different categories of data. So you actually end up writing a big, uh, complicated workflow. Uh, so we actually let them uh, design and define and design their uh, workflow using uh, JSON. Uh, and because we use uh, Kubernetes uh, and uh, Docker, so we actually let them uh, bring in any kind of uh, deep learning or machine learning uh, framework uh, of their choice. In addition to that, uh, AI platform is a multi-tenant multi architecture. So we have uh, more than like uh, five or six organizations uh, within the company. And each organization has uh, uh, at least uh, like 20 to 30 data scientists within them uh, who are using uh, our platform. And uh, we, are all, we, are all, we are actually like, uh, growing uh, more awareness uh, within the company also. And uh, like any other company, eBay is also investing uh, heavily into uh, machine learning and deep learning. A uh, few of the use cases are the computer vision, uh, the new recommendation engine, uh, which we are trying to, uh, trying to roll out, uh, machine translation, uh, and there are many other use cases uh, which uh, we have currently onboarded and want uh, more to come. So uh, a quick overview of how, uh, uh, how a, a typical uh, 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 work is uh, when we are uh, uh, using uh, uh, this platform. So user, uh, user or data scientist first comes in, uh, uh, has to first create a project uh, locally. So what, what, what they do is they define a workflow uh, which, uh, uh, which where, where they list a series of tasks. And they actually uh, then create a directed acyclic graph of the, all of the series of tasks. Uh, which eventually you end up uh, designing uh, your workflow. Once you have done that, uh, you then end up writing your uh, 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 application-specific code uh, for, the, for, for the machine learning or deep learning. Uh, most of the times, what we have seen is uh, uh, all the data scientists already have their uh, uh, applications ready. So they just uh, uh, come in with their uh, code uh, 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 tasks and they end up creating a, a, a workflow. So first, uh, they actually end up creating a project and they test, uh, test this project locally with sample data sets. And finally, once they have uh, refined their entire pipeline, uh, they can then uh, uh, go ahead and create an something, uh, something called as an artifact, which is nothing but uh, uh, executable uh, for uh, the AI platform, uh, which contains the definition of the workflow, any uh, dependencies, uh, and uh, the application-specific uh, code as well. So uh, all of this, and once they have the artifact ready, they deploy it onto the AI platform. And uh, they can then submit jobs onto that 
pause or resume uh, those jo uh, or stop the job uh, during uh, the execution at any time. So this is like a very high level uh, uh, view of the uh, architecture that we have. I couldn't get the more details uh, because of some legal complications and all of that. But uh, this is what it is like. Uh, we have a high performance compute cluster which is uh, made up of uh, uh, high memory uh, and uh, GPU uh, nodes. Uh, the pipeline is running on the cluster and the training data is stored in a series of databases. A few are custom uh, uh, implementation and few are uh, open source uh, solutions. So all of this is running within a secured environment, and the entire AI platform along with the data is obviously within uh, the secured environment. So uh, we have given uh, uh, users uh, uh, access to, uh, uh, to submit their jobs and to test it locally before they even do that uh, through uh, SDK, as I mentioned earlier. And they can then use uh, the command line library uh, to uh, manage their entire uh, uh, job, to submit the job, to view the resources, to view the logs, and um, they can do a bunch of things on the job using the command line utility, which is written in uh, Golang. Uh, we obviously use a, a series of uh, open source uh, product uh, to build uh, this AI platform. So coming to the monitoring uh, part of it, uh, typically users want to uh, know how much amount of uh, CPU uh, G, uh, uh, CPU and memory have been utilized both on uh, high memory and the GPU nodes. In addition to that, if they are doing some kind of computer vision and they are using uh, GPUs, they want to know uh, a bunch of metrics uh, around GPU. Uh, so we, prob we, uh, we want uh, to track those usage and uh, then report them so that they could either uh, do uh, capacity planning later or uh, they could optimize their uh, jobs so that they can use their uh, resources uh, efficiently. And in, in addition to that, uh, each organization has been given a quota, so they can, uh, they can go ahead and use and uh, uh, use this uh, dashboard uh, to see the resource uh, utilization so that they can better manage their uh, uh, jobs and quota, uh, what they have been given. Uh, in addition to uh, tracking uh, the resource utilization at the job level, we also want to track it at a higher levels, at a user level, and uh, obviously at the org level as well. So apart from uh, doing monitoring of the uh, machine learning and deep learning jobs, uh, we want to monitor our own cluster uh, uh, to make sure it's highly available. So we collect uh, lots of metrics around uh, disk, memory, and a lot of system metrics of the entire 200 plus uh, node cluster that we, are, that we have. Uh, in addition to that, um, we uh, also use uh, Zookeeper, Couchbase, and uh, 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 these uh, solutions to make sure to make our AI platform uh, uh, highly available and uh, quite a few things others. So we want to make sure that uh, all these systems are uh, highly available. So we have created a bunch of alerts uh, around them, uh, uh, around the key metrics. Uh, in addition, uh, we also want to we also do a lot of uh, alerting on the key metrics uh, for individual nodes as well. So uh, I, I can't show the live demo, but uh, this is how uh, uh, our dashboards look like. So this is the home page. Uh, uh, it actually uh, gives you a high-level view of uh, the capacity uh, of each of the each of the organizations. Uh, okay, yeah, each of the organizations. Uh, so primarily, we want to track uh, the four key metrics: uh, the CPU uh, and memory of both the high memory and uh, GPU nodes, and uh, NFS storage as well. So once once you're finished with uh, your machine learning or deep learning, uh, uh, they actually they, they want to store the models uh, within the within the NFS. And before we can do even any kind of training, uh, they have to get all the data from all those custom storage solutions onto NFS because uh, AI platform uses uh, its own uh, NFS volume to run those uh, machine learning jobs. So they want to we, we want to track uh, how much amount of uh, NFS uh, each of the uh, organization uh, is using. So users of this dashboard can then click uh, any of these panels, and it's going to take you to a more detailed uh, drill-down view, uh, at the, which is uh, similar metrics. And we have a bunch of other metrics uh, uh, in this dashboard. Uh, uh, but this time, it is uh, broken down at a uh, user level uh, within, the, within each organization. Again, uh, we can go one step uh, further uh, uh, and track uh, all kind of resource utilization uh, uh, for each uh, job. So users can come in, uh, when, when they actually submit the jobs, they get a run ID, a unique ID, and they can then uh, put in their unique IDs here, uh, those runs here, and see how much amount of uh, resources each of the tasks uh, within the workflow uh, is, is, is consuming. And yeah, this is again a high level view of uh, the monitoring uh, for every node that we want to do. A uh, few of the system resources, the Docker, the, uh, metrics around Docker, metrics around uh, disk, and the metrics around, uh, yeah, 
quite a few metrics uh, we, uh, we have there that we monitor at, uh, for every node. And this is like a basic overview of the alerting dashboard that we have. Uh, we obviously want to alert uh, our users uh, on uh, NFS usage. And we want to track our own uh, Couchbase uh, cluster. So we have uh, one active and one passive uh, Couchbase cluster that we monitor uh, for a few key, key metrics. And in addition to that, we also monitor uh, uh, Zookeeper metrics as well. Um, and obviously, uh, disk metrics uh, and CPU metrics uh, for uh, each of the nodes, and whether the node is uh, available or not, and all of those kinds of metrics. So we have like a bunch of metrics around nodes, uh, around Couchbase, around Zookeeper, and NFS. So this is a high-level overview of uh, how the scale looks like. Uh, we use uh, InfluxDB uh, as a time series uh, database. Uh, and uh, uh, we have like more than 200 plus nodes, as I mentioned earlier. So we use the Telegraph to collect uh, all those metrics, uh, the system level metrics and uh, the job level metrics. And they push the metrics uh, to uh, InfluxDB's, uh, InfluxDB. And because we use the Kubernetes, uh, because we're already using Kubernetes, uh, so we uh, run InfluxDB and Grafana uh, on those Kubernetes cluster uh, with around 64 cores and uh, one terabyte of memory each. Uh, we have we have a few other metrics. We have more than 100 plus measurements. Uh, each measurement has like uh, hundreds of metrics and uh, quite a few dimensions. So we so far we have seen that we have already reached uh, uh, 10 million uh, series. And every 10 uh, we uh, the lowest granularity of data that we collect is at every 10 seconds, and uh, we ingest around uh, 10,000 points uh, every 10 seconds into uh, a single node uh, InfluxDB uh, uh, instance. Uh, yeah, and recently we've been started seeing those InfluxDB queries are getting slower and slower. So we started doing this uh, uh, rolling up, and uh, we have this retention policy in place now, uh, which uh, uh, with, uh, with different levels of uh, uh, granularity. So uh, users are mostly interested in just the last month of data because. Uh, there are quite a few jobs, uh, deep learning and machine learning jobs, that can run for a few days. Uh, we haven't seen anything running uh, beyond a month, at least so far. Uh, so all that data is uh, stored at a 10 second interval. And then uh, we roll up uh, higher and higher at one minute and uh, uh, at 10 minutes uh, for uh, three years of aggregation. So this is mainly we use uh, all that kind of metrics when we want to do uh, additional capacity planning, when, uh, when we have meetings with each of those org owners uh, where they want to add additional capacity, then uh, this, this comes in pretty handy. So yeah, uh, within, within my division, at least where I've been working, uh, I, was, uh, uh, we, uh, I was able to like, uh, uh, show them the advantage of, uh, advantages of uh, Grafana. And uh, we are using Grafana uh, uh, with quite a few products within my org. Uh, few of them are like uh, A-B testing platform or experimentation platform. Even the Elasticsearch team and uh, tracking uh, platform are uh, uh, using uh, Grafana to collect and uh, uh, to, to report metrics. And each of these use cases are right now are using uh, InfluxDB because this, and with a single node solution, because we don't have uh, those many data points uh, that we want to collect. Uh, but definitely, uh, the usage of Grafana is spreading within the org. And I'm sure uh, across the company, many other products uh, should be uh, using uh, uh, Grafana. So yeah, uh, thanks for your time. <laughs>